Welcome to the Lotus Map Editor tutorial. In this episode, I want to talk about the head wire or catenary, or I recently read about a contact network. Keep in mind, it's all about the stuff that's slightly above a tram or a electrical bus. After we clarified the words we are using, I want to show you how to set up the catenary in Lotus. At the moment there are two types of catenary and I want to show obviously both because there are some tricks about it. And yeah, let's start with the with the doubled catenary. So when we're going to the catenary, catenary see at the moment two types. One is the doubled and one is the single catenary. For each type we got special poles. In every case you want to set up the catenary, you have to follow the right order. So at first you set always the poles, then the supportings for the catenary and the last part is always the catenary itself. To get to the poles we click on scenery objects, go to, okay it's not translated yet, in German it's called Gleisbau. Maybe in English it's called rails. And we got several types of poles. At the moment we want to talk about these. And we have a single track. So we obviously want to do want to use these both poles. When set up the poles, we're gonna use a little trick. Obviously, the first thing is we want to have these poles at the height of zero, and we want to use the relative height. So we don't have to change the value not that much. So after we're clicking on the right section, we go to scenery object and now we've got our pole. You see, we've got it at an unusual point at our mouse, but this point is very helpful because we now can simply press control and the pole snaps automatically to the rail. And this is very helpful because now every pole has the same length between the pole and the rail. And it all looks as usual. You don't have to build strange things with reference lines or whatever, or help lines. Simply press, press control or even you can click on the arrows from the rails. It's even more easier. So now we have to set up the rotation which is obviously like this. And I'm gonna put down the other poles like I did before. So we've got now the other type of pole. And as you see here, these poles support the, the set traction. In Germany, we call this, uh, maybe funny for you, zigzag Vorleitung. I'm gonna talk about the set traction a little bit later on. But for now, I want to set up some more poles. You always change between the inner and outer pole because it's constructed in German. This I is for inner and the A is for outer. Now set up the last by simply clicking on the arrow from the rail and now I've got our poles. It's quite easy, I think. You see now some weird circles around the uh, poles. These are the attach points for our catenary. You always set up the poles in the two-dimensional view, but the catenary you always have to set up in the third dimension if you are using the doubled catenary. The single catenary you can use the two-dimensional view. So there are some hints I can give you about that. But they, are, they have no pattern <laughs> at all. Maybe you come up with your own tricks, but these tricks I'm showing you are the best tricks that are working for me. So we go now to catenary, use the doubled catenary, and you see here the Z value is already set to 5 without us doing anything. And as I told you, you have to click on the orange circle. You see now the catenary snaps automatically to the pole and if this is the case then click left with your mouse. If you do it wrong you have to delete the catenary and set it up again. 
So now you see the clearly the set direction. So it's not a straight line above our rail. And that's a very good thing because you don't actually need some special constructions to build this set direction. You only use the thing we're gonna have in stock at the moment. So that's about the doubled head wire. Now I'm gonna move on further. And a uh, special thing I wanna show you is about the attach points because if you haven't set the pole in the right height or whatever, and you already set the catenary, you're a little bit doomed because the attach points aren't last that long. So if we move our pole, the catenary won't follow the attach point because when using the attach point, the height and the rotation and so on gets copied, but they are not directly attached to each other. So that's why you have to set your poles at first. And if you think you're done with it and all poles have the correct position and correct height, then you can set up the catenary and you're fine. For the single line, we also gonna have some special poles. These are also at the, I guess in English it's called rails, but in German it's called Gleisbau. We've got our other poles, so we're gonna set them up. And there are some important things about this. The first thing is we can't use a special trick to set them at the right position by clicking control or whatever. We have to set them up manually. And this is not that bad because at a straight rail track, you obviously don't have such a difference between the position of these two poles, but on a curvy track, they are not special. They have no special pattern they follow on. And so it might be better to do it manually all the time. You simply put them on the sidewalk because obviously they won't be on the road. So, and this, we use the five meter pole because you have a not a very narrow street. And when having a narrow street, you usually use the five meter pole, the eight meter pole you use in other situations, maybe on a wide place or a very big street with six lanes or something like that and the tram tracks in the middle and so on. So if we're going to the three dimensional view, we see two attach points. I'm not entirely sure which one to use. In this case, we uh, chose the right pole, but yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter in this case, which attach point you use. If there are if the poles are very near to the track, you obviously use the lower attach point. If the pole is a little bit more far away from the track, you lose the higher attach point. After we set the poles, we go to splines and go to the same category as we used before. Scroll down and now we have the so-called Querspandrad. We choose the first one. For this, we're gonna use some special settings in the map editor. The first thing is we want to use the relative height. We don't want to use the edges cutting into the terrain. Honestly, it doesn't matter if this button is clicked or not because this is a normal spline and it won't cut into the terrain anyway. Next thing is we're gonna use the snap set button because if we want to set up the attach point, you obviously want to get the height from the attach point. And last but not least, we use a five meters height and the brake mode. So the brake mode means you're gonna use only straight lines, not something like curves or whatever, just straight lines. And this is very helpful for the catenary. You want to place the left hand on the F3 button because you need that often in the, when placing a single catenary and their supportings. If you want to get an attach point, you obviously 
choose it in the 3D mode because if you're choosing then in the 2D mode, you're not entirely sure which attach point you're going to click on. You click on new spline, select the right attach point. See here the supporting snaps right to the attach point. It's a little bit <laughs> up in the air, but don't uh, get confused by this because when you are down with the placing of the supporting, the height is back on the right track again. So now we're going to press F3 to get to the two dimensional view and we're going to locate the left pole. Here we've got here the inner, so we need here outer section and the best thing is to hold down shift when placing the supportings because you now want to set up this supporting in a line with the left pole. So we now click and set up this. Also like in here, we're going to use the shift mode. So we have now the supportings for both rails and obviously we click on our attach point. Now we got that. We're gonna do the same procedure for every pair of poles. So this is in the third dimension. Now we're gonna change to the two dimensional mode. Now we're gonna use the inner part for both rails. There are always, when, when, when constructing double tracks, they are always at the same setting, either both on the inner part or both on the outer part. Let's get uh, this done. So always wait till the arrow is uh, at the attach point and then click on it because maybe there are some whatever things and the supporting won't get snapped to the attach point. So wait for the visual effect to appear and then you can click on it. So now we got the inner part, I guess, again. Oh no, the outer part. So something like this, something like this. Now we change the view again. And now we got our supportings. As you see, it's a little bit, um, I don't won't say complicated, but yeah, you have to do a little bit more. Last thing obviously is to place the catenary line. And again, be sure you have all your supportings and poles at the right place, because if you're change the positions or whatever. Afterwards, you have to lay down the catenary track once again. But if you're fine with it, you just click on this attach point and now you choose the arrows you got from the supportings to also get our set traction. So that what it's look like in the end. They are mostly parallel to each other and yeah, it's very realistic, I would say. So that's all about the catenary. I hope you've learned something and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.